So now that we've created our table and we have access to it and we can use it, we can begin to start inserting some data. So right now we are actually not containing any data. If we go to PHP my admin and we go to browse, we see that there's no there's nothing uh, within the rows within the table. It's a completely blank table. Um, and maybe we can use uh, either one, test one or test two. So they're gonna be both the same. Uh, so we're gonna, within the lessons, we're gonna go through uh, test one. Uh, so we see here that when we do select all from test, we're not seeing any results. And so this is the SQL query to see everything that's contained within test, to see all the different rows. Uh, so we need to start inserting some data so we can get some information here. So I'm gonna go back into my main index page and we're going to update this code here to insert some content into our database. So just like what we did in that setup here, all we have to do is create a SQL query and then run that query and that will do the inserting of the data. So it's really straightforward. Uh, so I can get rid of or I can make some space here and maybe we'll just keep this output uh, variable uh, so I can output some content into index.php. And I'm going to first show you how we insert data in my PHP admin and this will give you um, the build, more information on what we can see uh, when we do our SQL queries. So first of all we need to ask for a first name so John Smith and an age. Uh, so the age will set to 55. And notice how ID I'm leaving blank because we've got this auto increment on the ID. Uh, so we have the option here to uh, just simply leave it blank and it'll auto increment to the next available value. So we, we can ignore that when we're setting up new queries as well or new inserts into the table. And in the insert here, uh, this is identical to what we've done up here at the top. So we could do this if we ha if we were inserting and we had some additional values that we want to add in. But for now, I'm just gonna leave this blank. Uh, we also have the ability to preview the SQL. So this is all we're doing right now. We're just doing an insert into test ID and we're just leaving it null and leaving it null will give us the default value so this is the SQL query that we're going to use to do the insert and I'm going to just and that was through preview SQL. So I can go now to go and see that uh, because I've got the brackets around there and we're doing a null there. That's that's what the problem there is. So we don't want to insert a second set of values so it was actually taking that because I had placed that field in there. So see that once we uh, update that um, we're inserting properly and we're inserting that uh, name into our and now we can go to browse and we can see that new data populated into our database and it actually added it in there twice so even though it threw an error it still tried to do the insert properly. Uh, so I'm going to delete out those additional rows. So we have a choice now. We can go over to console and we can see our insert there. We can copy this out. Uh, we also in phpMyAdmin I also have the ability to do the inserts just through the SQL there. So I can write out that insert into ID and select out all the columns there. Uh, so this will work as well when we're trying to come up with those SQL. So we can see that's the same thing, insert into test. We list out the fields that we're using and we can skip ID because we don't have a value that we're inserting there. And then all we need to do here is add in those values. So first name and remember to uh, quote around those strings. And then here, whatever value we want to insert. So let's go into our PHP and try this out. So I'm going to use this exact query string that um, we had used earlier uh, and place that into PHP. And I'll show you how really easy it is. So we already have that SQL set up in that SQL connection. 
So I'm going to do the same type of format where I do SQL is going to be my variable. And then here, what I can do is I can maybe copy out that, uh, that same string. And I'm going to use double quotes. So I can simply do it like this. Insert into test and get rid of ID. Get rid of that. And because this is a number, I can update it to a numeric value. And then of course with PHP we can have dynamic values here. Uh, so we could insert a first name, a last name, um, and we could pick that up from a form as it's being passed in and so on. So we've got a lot of options there on what we can do with that. And then over here in the setup we can do the same way where we actually initiate the query. Uh, so this is going to do that same check and I always like to keep this successful. And failed. So I can just make sure that I'm uh, whatever's happening here is correct. So either way I'm going to have an out value for output in the variables. So I can remove out that uh, default setting up of that var variable. Uh, so either way, I'm going to get something within my output. So now go back out to the page, refresh it, and we see failed. So that means that there was something that happened that uh, failed within this insert. So let's go take a quick look at our code and see what went wrong there. So looking at this code, um, everything looks right. Uh, so I'll give you a hint on what's happened here. And that's having to do with our con.php file, but immediately it's hard to tell what's actually gone wrong. So one of the things we can do is we can actually output our error that's being thrown within the connection. So I can do something like failed because, and then over here I'm going to list out the error why it failed. So I, have a, I think I have a pretty good idea what happened and what went wrong here. Uh, but just to be sure, and um, so I'm not wasting my time going all over the place checking for different errors, I'd like to add in this MySQL error con, and this will indicate what's happened and what's gone wrong. So back to the page, refresh it, and we see failed because table test test doesn't exist. So remember, when we initially set this up, we we're just using our default uh, table here, test, test. And when we created um, a new database, we set those brand new tables within there. So our test and test2 were actually created in the database new temp. That's why test, test doesn't exist, but new, new temp test does exist. So going back over here, we have a few options we can either update our table that we're sending this into. So so going back over here, new temp. And this is where that test database should exist. So go back and refresh it and see if that fixed it. And in fact, that was uh, the error. So going over here, now we can go over to test and browse, so I close up that console there, and we see that we are inserting first name and last name. So that's how you do an insert, really straightforward, it works uh, the same way once we've got our connection, and that's also how you tell uh, what error and what's going wrong with your, with your MySQL.